Hey, it's Reckless Retiree here, and in my previous video on May 16th, 2020, I showed the dramatic way of uh, adding lye to aluminum chips in a wine bottle with balloon. But in this video, I'm using the same process, but in my small reaction chamber system, which isn't so dramatic, but it is much more functional. So enjoy. Hey, it's the Reckless Retiree here, and it is a cold May day. And I am going to do some modifications to my small system, small aluminum lye hydrogen making system and storage system. In other words, here's the reaction chamber. Here's the hose that leads up to the bubbler. And now here's the hose that leads up to the dryer. I used to have the dryer right next to the bubbler, right about there. Now I have it up in the air to try to use gravity to my advantage to keep any fluids from the reaction from getting into the storage compartment, uh, storage balls. All right, so here's my storage container, as you've seen. So the last time I made gas, hydrogen, I stored it in the red bladder, which is in this drum. There's a red bladder and a blue bladder, blue bladder. And the blue bladder is badder. No, I'm mad as a hatter. And then when I pressurize the, the uh, drum, as you can see, I have some pressure on the drum right now. It's 3 PSI, a little less than 3 PSI. Now what I do is I use this portable air tank, which is at like 90 PSI. That doesn't really matter. It just means there's more air in the uh, tank you can fit more air in the tank if you put it at a higher pressure anyway i'm releasing that air into this drum once it's sealed and um building up the pressure to no more than six psi usually five uh, these drums can't handle any more than that and i certainly don't want this drum to explode last time i made gas I uh, filled up that blue uh, dryer with fluid, and then it overflowed into the bladder. So there's fluid in the bladder, which is not good. You want your air, your hydrogen, excuse me, to be dry. So I uh, emptied that out, and I put it, I don't have a filter for it right now. They're on order. So I just folded up a hand towel and rolled it up and put it in there, which fit perfectly. Nice and tight and filled up the whole thing. So we'll see how well that works as a air dryer. And if it works well, maybe that's just what I'll do. Because, you know, when it's, it's uh, drenched, I'll just take it out and throw it in the washing machine, wash it, dry it, bring it back. So mm -hmm. I discovered that problem and I saw my bladders were still filled with air, the blue air and the reds, uh, maybe 80% with hydrogen. And so I uh, tightened the lid, pressurized the can, it all worked great. And then I filled up those two hydrogen balloons, those two Mylar balloons with hydrogen. Now, it would fill up many more of those, but I don't have them. Um, so now what I want to do is I have both the blue valve and the yellow valve open, which the red blue valve's got a little red on it representing the red ball. So um, my intent at this point is to pressurize a tank and to bubble the air out through the valve that I fill up the balloons with. So the other thing I wanted to do was empty the bladders that are in this drum, make sure I get all the air out of the blue one, all the liquid out of the red one, and the hydrogen out of the red one, so they're completely empty which I hope if I continue to pressurize, see what happens is as you're using the gas in the drum and the bladders decrease in size, 
the pressure drops and you have to keep adding air, air to make up for it. And I have to keep doing that till I get nothing out of the bladders. That's my intent. At that point, I am going to leave both valves open and use both balls for hydrogen storage, doubling my hydrogen storage. And then I was gonna run this system with the elevated dryer with the hopes that I would not get any liquid in my bladders. So then I would have dry hydrogen, which I intend on using to feed into a catalytic heater to see if I can make that work. And also I want to feed it into a um, Rubik's tube. And if you don't know what that is, you can look that up online. Uh, they do it with propane. I want to do it with hydrogen, which could also be used as a kind of a hydrogen gas log. If you uh, put jets on a pipe and then feed the hydrogen into that and the gas comes out to multiple jets and you light those jets, then it's like a gas log and you could have that. And the advantage to the gas log is that, and the catalytic heater, is that uh, there are no noxious fumes. So you can run it in the house without any ventilation. The only down, I mean, what you would have to do is have some source of air, a leakage that brings air into the room. Otherwise, your burning process could eventually uh, use up the air in the room if your room was sealed perfectly. All right, so that's where we are with that. I will get back to you after I've completed some of these things. All right, so I have emptied out, well, I've emptied out the two bladders and hopefully got all gas and liquid out. Now both valves are open. This should be closed with this valve, but I'm gonna put it under the water just in case it leaks. And the other end, I will do that too. Uh, okay, so both those, I found out this uh, flashback arrestor has, a min, has, has to have a minimum PSI, 15 PSI, to let the gas go through. And that's why nothing ever came out of that. And I got another flashback arrestor that is different to, is that's not the case so hopefully that will work for my heating experiments but anyway all right so i am going to get my uh aluminum live reaction chamber small reaction chamber working with a third of a cup of aluminum filings turnings a, that's a tablespoon, that red thing down there, is a tablespoon of lye and 100 liters of water. And this is exactly what I put in the wine bottle that gave me that crazy reaction. And I've done this uh, since then with this, uh, and it worked fine. Uh, the only problem is that I got the uh, flushing of the liquid from the reaction chamber into the uh, ball. So I'm hoping with my dryer up in the air like that, it'll keep that liquid from getting in there. So that's what we're gonna do. I need to set this where you can see and I can do my stuff. All right, <clears throat> so I'm gonna put the aluminum turnings into the reaction chamber. All right, so there's a third of a cup. Now, I'm going to put a tablespoon of lye in there. Well, these lids never want to cooperate. Okay, and now 100 liters of water and I'm going to quickly do this. All right. 
So, it'll probably be a few minutes before this thing really starts to take off. Well, I think it's going. Yeah, you know, turn this around. Okay, see here? See the bubbles coming up through there? Still getting liquid though. Look at that liquid. But you don't see anything through here, which is really curious to me. It should be bubbling down through here, but I don't see it. And up here, you know, can't really see it go through there. That's a towel. And I think this liquid was already in the hose. I don't think that's liquid that I've created at this time. And maybe it's not getting through because it's having to work its way up there. You can see the bubbles come up, but then they stop right around there. So I think there's no liquid there. So it's good in a way because you can see that you're making gas. But... But um, I don't think it's from this. I think it's from before. I didn't empty the lines completely. Well, I'm just going to leave this go. And then we'll come back after a while and see how much gas we have in the, in the balls. Okay, this is about an hour later, and you can see these are the same hoses I was showing you, the bubbling taking place, and it doesn't seem to be bubbling anymore. I'm assuming that uh, the reaction is done for the most part, uh, and we can see what the balls look like. Uh, well, hmm. There's probably gas in those balls, but you can't really tell. But just to be perfectly safe, and because I'm kind of done for the day, I'm going to let this go until another time, maybe tomorrow, where I will reload the reaction chamber and, you know, keep doing that until I get those balls full of hydrogen again. And, of course, part of the uh, idea here is to see how much it takes to fill them, both balls with hydrogen. And, um, you know, how much aluminum it takes and how much lye. And, of course, the water doesn't matter. But, I mean, at a third of a cup per uh, charge of aluminum and a, 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 a tablespoon of lye, um, I'm going to guess it's going to take two to three cups of aluminum, which is uh, one cup would be three times, two cups would be six times, and three cups would be nine times. So nine loadings to fill up those balls and then that would be nine tablespoons of lye so first of all i have to see exactly how much it takes and then also uh, you know the cost i got the filings for free because a friend of mine got them at work for free they were giving them away and if I can keep doing that, which I'm not going to necessarily count on, but if I can keep doing that, then that'd be awesome. And then the lie, I have to figure out how much that would cost. I don't know. I can't remember how much a bottle of that costs and how much a bottle, how much uh, nine tablespoons would be out of that bottle. I'm going to guess a third of the bottle. That's a guess. So I got a case of the lye a while back, and I'll have to go see what that uh, case cost. Anyway, we'll still have to calculate how much it would take to fill up the four, four, the two balls full of hydrogen. And then from that, uh, see 
at least uh, if one ex one way of handling it would be to see how many balloons I could fill with the two balls. And I'm going to guess at this point 10 at least 10 balloons. So one thought is to make this into a hydrogen balloon business. Advertise in the local uh, penny pincher or advertise on Facebook in the local area uh, or wherever, advertise wherever and see if people want to buy hydrogen balloons uh, for the uh, uniqueness of it because who else sells hydrogen balloons? And for the scientific aspect of it, um, in fact, you could make this into a, I'll come over and I will show you the whole process and, uh, you know, for like a science geek's birthday party or something, I don't know. And <clears throat> then leave, everybody would get to take a hydrogen balloon home. And you would charge... I would charge more than you'd pay for a helium balloon because of the, you know, uniqueness of it. And then, of course, you'd have to make people aware that this is has a little bit of danger involved because the balloons are flammable. So, there's that. But anyway, that's a possibility for this whole thing. Come rolling up at a birthday party with the rig and uh, show everybody how you're using the aluminum and lye and uh, fill up the balloons for everybody light off a few maybe uh, make some hho balloons light those off show, show how explosive they are and of course that'd be fun right exploding the balloons with loud noises and such all of those things i'm going to experiment with and see how well it works so stay tuned for the next exciting adventure of the Reckless Retiree.